Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. In today's video, I'll be using Honeybee Stamps Lovely Layers Seashore Die Set, their Lace Heart Layering Frames. For a sentiment, I have Mailbox Memos, the Stamps and Coordinating Dies. And for pattern paper, I'll be using their Vitamin C Paper Pad. I selected two pattern papers from the Vitamin C Paper Pad and cut them out using the two largest dies from the Lace Heart Layering Frames die set. It's hard to see in the video, but the layering frame dies add a beautiful etched detail along the outside. And the smaller frame also adds the faux stitch detail. I put some double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the larger scallop die cut piece. I'll remove the release paper, and I'm also adding a little bit of Barely Art glue along that very outside edge. Want to make sure it lays nice and flat. I'll place a couple of large acrylic blocks on top and let those sit for a few minutes. Now I'll put glue on the back of the smaller frame piece, making sure to get it all along the outside edge and also add some glue in the very center. Then I'll adhere it on my background piece. Again, I'll place the acrylic blocks on top for some added weight and let the glue dry. Now I'll put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. This is an American standard A2 size card, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. Honeybee Stamps layering frame sets are some of my favorite. I love how you can mix and match them and the edge detail is just gorgeous. I'll set aside my card and start working on the shells. I've already gone ahead and die cut out all of the pieces. My card will be featuring all three of the different shells and also the grassy piece. The lovely layer die sets are also some of my favorites. This is a really easy set to assemble and the detail is stunning. The first two shells I'm assembling have three different layers and I selected three different shades of cardstock. And the last shell has two different pieces and I use two different shades of yellow cardstock. I'll adhere all of those together using Barely Art glue. The cardstock I selected for the shells is from my scrap bin. It's always nice to use up some of those scrap pieces. And I do tend to save the smaller pieces of colored cardstock since sometimes all you need is that tiny little piece. The light green paper I use for the grassy die cut piece is actually more of a paper instead of cardstock, but I did find it in my cardstock bin. It's super thin, but the color worked perfectly for this card. I really like the colors of all the shells, but I decided to add some brown ink and give them more of a distress look. I'm using the Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide ink. I'm still trying to keep the color fairly light, so I'll first rub it off on my mini stencil mat, and I'm putting a little more ink on the very edge of the shells and a lighter coat on the center of the shells. And I'll also add just that little bit of ink on the grassy piece. And I'm trying to be very gentle on this piece and not rip the paper. Once the images are finished, I'll set those aside. I'll grab the card and using the same Gathered Twigs ink color, I'm adding a little bit of ink along the outside edge. It probably would have helped if I cleaned my mat first, but I am being careful not to place the card on the ink that's on the mat. Now I'll add the die cut images on the card, starting with the grassy piece. Using Honeybee Stamps reverse tweezers, I'll hold the die cut in place, put Barely Art glue on the back, and I'll adhere the grassy piece on the right side of the card, about an inch up from the bottom. Now I'll add the yellow shell on the left side, the orange shell on the right side, and the blue shell will go in the center. Since it's sitting on top of the other shells and there's lots of other cardstock layers, I will add some foam dimension on the back side, but just in the areas where it doesn't sit on the orange shell. I'm using Honeybee Stamps black foam strips, and I'll cut just a small piece to fit behind the shell. On the very right side of the blue shell, I've already put some scrap pieces of cardstock, and that'll help it stay at the same level. 
After adhering it in place, I realize I still need some more foam behind the top portion. So I'm adding a tiny little piece of the black foam and just sneaking it underneath there. Next, I'll add a white splatter all over the background of the card and also on the shells and grass. I'm using Spellbinder's new Splatter White Opaque Watercolor. This is the first time I'm trying it and it is available at Honeybee Stamps. I'll put just a tiny bit of the watercolor on an acrylic block, spritz it with water, then I'll mix it up, put my paintbrush in there, and gently tap my paintbrush all over the card, adding this lovely white splatter. I think this adds a lovely touch to the card. You won't see this splatter on the very center, but you will see the white splatter on the outside edge and also on the shells. I'll set that aside to dry and start working on the sentiment. I have a scrap piece of light tan cardstock in my Mini Misty, and I selected two of the sentiments from the Mailbox Memo stamp set. Happy Mail and also Just For You. I'll ink it up using Honeybee Stamps Intense Black Ink. This is my favorite ink for sentiments. I always get a clean impression. Next, I'll pull out my Bitty Buzz Cutter, grab the coordinating dies to go around the sentiments, and I'll hold those in place using scrapbook.com's mint tape. I really like the new mailbox memo stamp set. Lots of great sentiments that you can use throughout the year. And it's always nice having the coordinating dies, cuts out that perfect border around the sentiments. And the dies are very easy to line up with the sentiment. I'll put two pieces of tape down to hold the die in place. Then I'll run it through my die cut machine. And I like to cut up. I know some people say this is backwards. I have the flat plate down first. Then I flip over the paper and I'm cutting up into the top plate. Now I'll pop out the die cuts and you can see they cut out perfectly. I'll be gluing them on the left side of the card right next to the grass. I'll start with the happy mail sentiment. Put glue on the back, adhere that in place. Then I'll add just for you underneath off to the right just slightly. For embellishments, I'm adding a few of the warm pearl stickers. I'll use the light cream color. They are stickers, so they do have adhesive on the back, but I like to add just a tiny drop of glue to make sure they stay in place. There are three different sizes of pearls. I'm using the two smallest sizes. I'll put two underneath the sentiment on the left side and one above the sentiment on the right side. So there is my finished card. I love how this turned out. And I did make two using this design. I'm planning on using these as Father's Day cards going to the residents at a nearby retirement home. I think having the general sentiment on the outside is perfect. I will stamp Happy Father's Day on the inside and also include a handwritten message. And I know it's only March, but it never hurts to get an early start on donation cards. If you are interested in any of the products I use in this video, I do have links in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.